Praise God. You got your Bibles? Let's shift gears. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. We'll begin this journey. I'll, I'll, I'll share a few things here for a few minutes, and then we'll get through and, uh, and try to finish this out over the next week or two. I'm talking about the whole book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting in some things here. This is such a wonderful, wonderful word. Father, thank you so much for the words that have been shared already this morning, and thank you for that which we're fixing to share just for a few minutes. Holy Ghost, thank you for giving utterance, and not only giving utterance, but helping us see things and know things we haven't seen and, 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 and understood, uh, just increasing us more and more. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Paul said right here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Now let me say something to you. You know, Alan made a reference a while ago. When you hear a good word of God, and the gospel is the good news. When you hear the gospel, where you hear things that pro- proclaim to you what Jesus has done for you and me, what the Father has done for us through him, what we've been made, who we are. Listen, you have to receive that. Not only do you have to receive it, you're going to have to stand in it. You know, the scripture says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. What do you mean stand therefore? You're going to have to stand on the truth, the good news of what Jesus has done for you. And there's things out there, and he mentioned this a while ago, there's things out there that will try to tell you that's not the case. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold, lay hold on eternal life. You and I will have to cast down imaginations and we'll have to bring thoughts into captivity. See, because Paul says the weapons of our warfare... And he uses the word warfare, are not carnal. But they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down those imaginations, those images. So you start getting an image on the inside of you. What do you mean? You just don't see it, that it's ever going to work. You ever heard anybody say, well, I just don't see how that's going to work. You ever heard that, that statement? I just don't see. Now, they'll say that, but really that's the image they have on the inside of their heart. I just don't see myself healed. I just see myself always having to, just to deal with this. This is just, I just see myself always having to deal with it. That is an image on the inside of you. But Paul's talking about the gospel. And he says you have to receive it and you have to stand in it. Praise God. I preached unto you, which you have all which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory. Now, I, I got a little one by the word keep in memory, and over in the margin of my Bible, the Greek says, hold fast. Now, we've done just heard something, see, and, and it's going to connect with this. What do you mean, hold fast? You're going to have to hold fast to something, but we've already been told and, and taught here this morning that death and life are in the hand, King James says power, but in the hand of the tongue. You know, Paul talked about the spirit of faith. We'll get into that in our study in 2 Corinthians. He, he quoted David where he says, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. See, faith has a voice. The, righteousness has a voice. Righteous, the righteousness of faith does not say certain things. In other words, it turns loose. The hand of its tongue turns loose certain things. It don't say, oh God, please come and do something. And a lot of times, listen, people are sincere. People are in situations. And listen, this is not a put down. But a lot of times people are praying prayers to God and they're begging God. Literally, sort of, they're, asking, they're almost begging God to do something for them. Oh, please God, please Please, God. That's a tough situation. Please, God. And yet they're asking God to do something that that he's already done. 
That's the wrong way to pray. And yet a lot, a lot, a lot of Christians pray that kind of prayer. He can't answer that prayer. Even though he loves us and his love is unchangeable towards us. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love that he has towards us because he commended his love towards us while we were yet sinners and he sent Jesus to us. But he can't answer that prayer. You have to keep in memory certain things. You have to hold fast to certain things. What do you mean? The gospel. Now, when we say the gospel... Paul's going to say some other things here, but we know the, the gospel consists of everything that God did for us through his son Jesus. And I'm talking about everything. Because we see where Paul tells the church at Corinth, and like I said in this next letter, he said all things, plural, are yours. See, we have an inheritance as the saints of God. There's different things in your inheritance. Not just one thing. There's many things in your inheritance. But you have to receive this by faith. And you have to keep in memory. You have to hold fast to it. Well, how do you hold fast with it? You've got to hold fast with your hand. The hand of what? The hand of your tongue. Because your tongue is connected to your heart. Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I'm telling you right now, folks, I'm talking to me just as much as I'm talking to you. Alan's standing up here talking. He, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm taking hold of it. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. He said, keep it in memory or hold fast what I preached to you unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received... How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Verse 5. And that he was seen of Cephas or Peter. Then of the twelve. Let me tell you something. You know the Lord is very personal with us. Now we know the situation with Peter. Peter denied the Lord. Three times. Jesus told him he would. He said no I won't. No, I'll die with you. I'll go all the way to the end. I'll never deny you, Lord. And here's the thing about it. If you read the Gospels, he's not the only one that said it. There's a verse in the Scripture that says, and all the disciples said the same thing. It wasn't just him. They all said it. But he followed him. Not everybody followed him. And yet we got different uh, uh, accounts of this in the Gospels. And yet one account says that when Jesus turned and looked at him, he was cursing and swearing while he was denying him. And they made eye contact. But before this happened, you remember the words that Jesus told Peter? He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith would not fail. Now, Jesus knew specifically how the devil was going to try to sift him. He was going to try to use his failure and his mistake, what he should have done, what he didn't do, or what he did do that was not right. He was going to use that against him to the point that he was going to try to establish in Peter's heart That what he had done was unforgivable. In other words, he'll, he'll always look at me differently because of that situation. You know, there's people today that deal with situations like that in their lives. Not from God. Now, religion will try to tell you that God's that way, but he's not. But I'm talking about just in, in relationships with people. There's people, because of what they did, they will always look at that person a certain way because of what they did or what they didn't do or should have done. Can I say something to you? 
All of us need a revelation of the power of the blood of Christ. The forgiveness that we all enjoy. Because if we had a true revelation of righteousness in the gospel and what it produced, we would never look at someone in that manner. Because the Bible tells you, if you offend in one point, you're guilty of it all. Even when Paul, to the church at Rome, discussed in the first chapter situations that, that are ungodly to the point that people have given themselves over to a reprobate mind, and yet if you go to the second chapter, he talks to the Jews and said, let me just tell you, I know you look at what I just talked about here. He said, but you're, you're just as guilty. You're inexcusable yourself. And I know some of those people are, you know, the religious people are so puffed up. Well, well, I don't have that kind of manner of behavior in my life. Now, we're not condoning that or saying that it's godly. But sometimes people get puffed up and then their sin is not as bad as somebody else's sin. No matter what sin it is, every sin, all sin, it takes redemption through his blood has to be atoned for. has to be paid for. Lord, thank you. He was seen of Cephas. Jesus wants... Here's my point of it. Jesus will make sure... If you'll just open up your heart, he will... He will reveal to you by His Spirit how much He loves you. He, listen, he, he, will, he will reveal to your heart how, how much He wants to bless you and to, and, and to, and to bring uh, good into your life. You know, we, we, need to, we need to get up every day in a receiving mode, not a demand mode. All of us have things we have to do. It's like Alan was talking about earlier. We all have responsibility. Okay? Sometimes we allow the responsibilities of life, it really the Bible calls them the cares of life, to begin to affect our heart. And it can affect our heart to the degree that we're not really receiving things. You have to receive them and you have to stand in certain things. But we need to be with a mindset that God every day has new mercies like the Bible says he has for us. Right? His mercies are new. When? Every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, we need to get up and sing maybe. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God, my Father, morning by morning. What kind of mercies? What? New mercies I what? I see. Ooh, I get chill bumps already thinking about that. You know, the person who wrote that song, was being influenced by the Holy Spirit at the time they wrote that song. There was a divine influence impacting their heart and their thought life. Trying to reveal to them the total reality of the mercies of God that are new every morning. And he wants us to see them. Yes. And let, let me say this to you. Acknowledging God in all of your ways... It's connected to it. I'm telling you, it's connected to it. 
I mean, that is a simple thing, but I, I'm telling you right now because we found out even here lately, there's some things just we could testify. I'm not going to get into it right now because I'm going to close out. But I found out that if you'll just acknowledge God, like Alan was talking about, don't try to force things. Don't try to make things happen of your own effort. Truly trust. Expect, when I, we're talking about trust. You know, faith really, really expects and believes that good's going to happen. Yeah. Not bad. Good. And, and I'm telling you right now, I, I think we mentioned this Wednesday night, even when you acknowledge God in something, and maybe there has been some time, it could be months, it could be a year or two. I like, he mentioned Brother Keith. I like what Brother Keith said about this as well. He said one time he'd, he'd, he'd acknowledge God in an area, prayed about something, went before the Lord with it. And there was some time that went, maybe it was a year, year and a half too. And he's like, the thought came to him, man, it's, it's, it's not working. This is not working. And then he realized that the father would never tell him it's not working. He, he said, it just don't know me. You know, God would never tell me that it's not working. Jesus would never tell me it's not working. So where's that voice coming from? Where's that thought coming from? He said, then I realized he's a liar. Yes. There is something working. He's trying to tell me it's not working. He's bringing the thought to me that it's not working. Yeah. So he said, it is working. Yeah. And that in itself... It did come to pass exactly what he desired. He didn't have to ante up again. All he had to do is trust. He'd already acknowledged God in it. You know, let the Lord build the house. Don't want to labor in vain. Don't want to do it in my own strength. The Bible says be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then yet we've seen this just when you get over there and you don't try to force things but you, you want to truly listen to God and, and acknowledge Him and then allow Him to, to, to speak to your heart or, or to do some things that He wonderfully does as far as His influence on other people and things of that nature, then all of a sudden you'll find yourself standing right in the middle of what you desired. It's all come to pass, and He gets all the glory and credit for it because you realize, you absolutely realize who's behind all of it. And whose hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness. Hey, here's the deal with this. We're just getting started. There's some good things in this chapter. But we got here to Cephas because Jesus made an appointment to come see him personally. And then he appeared to the other disciples. You know why? Because Jesus cares that much about, that, about us individually. He cares that much about us individually and collectively of course but listen it's personal with him you ever heard anybody say would you please like to you know i've, I've been in churches services where you have an invitation and in, in, in the invitation would you uh, like to come and accept jesus christ as your personal lord and savior well you know it is personal it's very personal with him so personal that he wanted to make sure he, he saw Peter first. Why? Because it don't take long that what happened to Judas could happen to Peter. It don't take but just a few minutes. I usually don't do this, but some of you may is aware of this, but I'm going to say this because I felt impressed to say it. Let me tell you something. The, the, the power... And the heart of the master for us. The love. See, the gospel that Paul was trying to preach and to deliver to people was so strong, had so much power in it, that it, it, it's, the, it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that would believe. And yet I, we had a, a, a young man. Thank God he gave his life to Jesus. Gave his life here in a church service a few years back. And yet he had some issues in his life he dealt with. And he'd been incarcerated before. And he was doing well. Doing well. And somebody, uh, I, I think from his family, cousins or something of that nature, what I was told, 
came by. Hey, I need you to go with me. They got off in the car and went off together. And he slipped up and made a mistake. And, of course, uh, when he came back, he was under the influence of, of some things, said some things, did some things, and, of course, it flipped some people out. They called the authorities. They put him in jail. I, I couldn't get to see him. They wouldn't let nobody see him, uh, uh, I think, over the weekend. And uh, so on Monday morning, I, I was going to go down there and, and see him. And he was in a cell. And he was about to be released in two hours because the people who had called the authorities were not going to press any charges against him. So he's not going to have any charges against him. But see, the devil came to his mind and says, because of what you just did, you're going back. You're going to go back to prison. In two hours, he's walking. Free. No charges. But he took his own life in the jail cell. He hanged himself because he thought that he was going back to prison and the truth and reality was in two hours he was walking as a free man and we could have got to see him and minister to him. Jesus wanted to go see Peter because he knew, listen to me, he knew that Satan wanted to sift him and he knew the means and methods that he would use to try to take him out. Do you know... Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But you know, the devil's devices is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we get a revelation of the true gospel, of the power of the love and forgiveness that the Lord has for us, to such degree. See, you, there's degrees uh, and depths of his love. I've said this before, and I'm going to say this again as we close. For the most part, the church... They believe that their sins are forgiven. But for the most part, the church just have, has, has no revelation of what degree that they are forgiven. The depth and the breadth and the length and the height of this love and the heart of, of our Savior, our Shepherd, who loves us so much and gave His life for us. That's why Paul said this, he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives within me, and the life that I now live in the flesh down here on this earth, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, for I do not frustrate the grace of God. What can frustrate grace? Not believing. Not having any faith can frustrate grace. Faith in what? A faith that works by a revelation of his love. Galatians 5, 6 says, faith worketh by love. New Testament, new covenant faith is going to be driven by the love of God. It's going to work by the love of God. Paul says, I live my life now by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Constantly believing and adhering to and trusting and acknowledging. Nothing can separate me from my, my Savior. Nothing can separate me from goodness and mercy. It will follow me all the days of my life. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And you know what? We hold fast to these things. We keep in memory. How do we hold fast? We believe and therefore we speak or we acknowledge. See, when you acknowledge him in all of your ways, acknowledge him in all your ways is not only inquiring of him and saying, Lord, what about this? Acknowledging him sometimes can acknowledge what he's already done for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. You acknowledge that. You acknowledge him and what he did for you in everything, in all of your ways. 